So um, I think uh, something you're likely to see questions about is isomerism, drawing the isomers of something. So let's try drawing the isomers of butane. Yeah, this is a pretty popular type of question, and there's a method for learning how to do these. We're going to draw the isomers of butane. All right, um, so first of all, draw butane. Good. Okay. Basic, and notice that this has four carbons. Now, the next thing that we want to do is we want to draw a longest chain. So here's the longest chain is four carbons. So now I'm going to draw a longest chain that has only three carbons. So here's the longest chain with three carbons. Now, this is not an isomer of butane yet, because it only has three carbons. To be an isomer of butane, I have to put in a fourth carbon. Mm -hmm. So I need to put in the fourth carbon, but I have to do it in a way that the longest chain still has three carbons. So for example, I can't put the fourth carbon over here. Because if I put the fourth carbon over here, then the longest chain has four carbons, which I said I didn't want to do. But there is another place that I can put the fourth carbon. I could put the fourth carbon here. How many carbons are there total in this molecule now? Yeah, there's one carbon at the end of each line, and this corner here, or intersection, is also a carbon. So this really is an isomer of butane, because they have the same numbers of carbons. And now, uh, so now I've drawn another isomer of butane. So the, so the systematic trick is start by drawing the longest possible chain. Then draw the next longest chain and ask where you can put in the extra carbon. So here's one isomer. Here's another isomer. Let's ask if there's any other. Isomers. Well, are there any? Um, I tried putting, I drew the longest chain with three carbons, and then I put the fourth carbon here, but that didn't work because that just get, got me back to a, a longest chain of four carbons. And then I put the fourth carbon here, and that did give me a new molecule. How about putting the fourth carbon here? Would that work? Well, no, because that would again get me back to the longest chain of four carbons. So I've basically proven that these are the only isomers of butane. You could try, try drawing just two carbons. Uh, but then if you tr when you try to put in the third and the fourth, you're always going to have a longest chain that's more than just two carbons. So the longest chain that you're going to have has to be at least three carbons. What does isomers mean? What does it mean if two molecules are isomers? It's the, the same atoms, but in a different order, basically. Good. Same atoms, but in a different order. We want to be a little bit more precise. Not just the same atoms, but the same numbers of atoms. So it's not good enough that they both have carbons and hydrogens. They have to have the same number of carbons and the same number of hydrogens. Um, another way of putting it that is they have to have the same molecular formula, because the molecular formula gives you the numbers and the elements. So these are isomers because they have the same numbers of atoms. They clearly have the same numbers of carbons. How do I know they have the same number of hydrogens? Well, it turns out that if you have two molecules with no single bonds, uh, with no double bonds, if you have two saturated molecules, then if they have the same number of carbons, they have to have the same number of hydrogens. So that's worth saying again. If you have two pure hydrocarbons, if you have two pure saturated hydrocarbons with the same number of carbons, they must have the same number of hydrogens. So you don't need to count the hydrogens separately. You just need to count the number of carbons. If you have two pure hydrocarbons that are both saturated and they have the same number of carbons, they must have the same number of hydrogens. We can test that here. How many hidden hydrogens are there on this carbon? Three. So this is really CH3. And what's this really? C, how many hydrogens? And how about the next one? Uh, two. And how about the last one? Three. So here's another way of writing the same molecule. This would be called condensed notation. Let's try that here. Um, how many hydrogens on this carbon? Three. How many hydrogens on this carbon? One. Right. Good. 
And this one? Three. And how about this one? Three. Now, how many hydrogens are there total here? Three, six, nine, ten hydrogens. So the molecular formula here would be C4H10. And how many hydrogens do we have here? Three, five, seven, ten. So that's an example of the idea that if you have two saturated hydrocarbons, you only have to make sure they have the same number of carbons. If they have the same number of carbons, they automatically have the same number of hydrogens. Now, this only works because these are both saturated. It only works because they don't have any double bonds. And because there's nothing but carbons and hydrogens. If there was a chlorine here or a nitrogen, then they wouldn't, well, uh, then it wouldn't quite uh, work the same. Although, actually, if there was an oxygen here and there was an oxygen here, then they would again automatically have the same number of hydrogens if they were both saturated. So we don't really have to count the hydrogen separately. We just have to count the other elements. That's another reason why we might as well use bond line notation, because it takes our attention off of the hydrogens. And we see here now these do have the same molecular formula. So one, the way I phrased this was, draw the isomers of butane. But another way you might see this on the test is, draw the isomers of C4H10. They might not say butane, they might just say, draw the isomers of C4H10. Well, then the systematic method is to start by drawing the longest possible chain which would be four carbons. Then you would draw the next longest possible chain, which would be three carbons. And that's all that you could do in this case. 